Real quick, on your way down to the meeting in the multi-purpose room, please pick up your year-end financial statements in your mailboxes. Larry has them all ready to go. Okay, keep going. <laughs> Don't worry, Russ, it won't be long. Uh, a quick update. Uh, I've delivered 210 pounds of food to Bob Elementary School so far. <clears throat> Um, we have another week to go of food collection. Uh, I would just ask that if you have not done it yet or you would like to do it again, we are in great shape on a lot of items, but we need peanut butter and jelly, uh, spaghetti sauce, and spaghetti. Those are the, probably the four categories. So we're at the store. If you want to pick up an extra peanut butter and jelly uh, in plastic jars, not glass, uh, or jelly or uh, spaghetti and spaghetti sauce, that would be great. That'll round out our giving. But it's just an unbelievable. My back hurts carrying all the stuff over. Uh, but keep it up. That's why, that's why they made Advil. So thank you. Do we have any other kids that want to come up? Any other adults who think they're kids? Come on up. <laughs> the young at heart. We don't, we don't discriminate. Okay, we'll have a seat. Okay. Question for you this morning. I have two bottles of water. You want to come over here? I have two bottles of water. I have this one. And I have this one. Which one do you want to drink? This one. This one. Yeah. And you know what it says on? It says it is spring water. So we have to think it's pure. All right. And this might have been pure one time, but it's kind of ugh, yucky now. Okay. And the reason I brought these is because we're going to talk about the Beatitudes, which is a big word but it really means blessings. And the one I want to talk about is where Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart. Now, do you know what, you want to take a guess at what that might be? What do you think pure in heart might be? Anybody? Pure in heart means your heart looks like this. And what that means is that when Jesus is in your heart, your heart is pure and it's clean and it's happy. And that's hard to do all the time because, you know what, we fight with our siblings or mommy and daddy tell us to clean our room and we don't. Or uh, there's a kid at school that picks on us and we'd really like to punch him, but we can't. But we think about it, and so our heart starts looking like this. But because we know Jesus just loves us so much that he forgives us when we have those yucky moments, and he fills our heart up again with love. And what that means when we're pure in heart, we can love our siblings and we can obey mommy and daddy. And we can even love those kids that might pick on us at school. And so that's what Jesus is talking about when he says he wants us, or we're blessed or happy when we're pure in heart. Okay? So I have a reminder for you that you can stick somewhere. 
just to remember to be pure in heart, okay? Thank so you. you can pin that on you or take it home or give it to mommy or whatever you want to do, but okay? All right, let's pray. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you so much that we know to be happy, that our hearts are pure, that we're kind, that we're caring, and that we love you so we can love our neighbors. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thank you. <laughs> And now I would like to invite you to please stand for the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sins. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us, that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. <clears throat>
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. justice and perseverance in striving for peace, that in our words and deeds the world may see the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. says, Rise, plead your case before the mountain, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me, for I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent you before Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam son of Beor answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord, and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, and to love kindness, 
and to walk humbly with your God. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, God. Today we will recite poem, <coughs> Psalm 15. I will read the light print and the congregation will respond with the poem. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle, who may abide upon your holy hill. Those who be a plaintiff's life and do what is right, who speak the truth from their heart. They do not slander with the tongue. They do no evil to their friend. They do not cast discredit upon a neighbor. In their sight, the wicked are rejected, but they honor those who fear the Lord. They have sworn upon their health, and do not take back their word. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. The second reading today is from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided, through the foolishness of our proclamation, to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the call, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. According to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger for, and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior this day. Oh, man. Last Sunday, we heard Jesus call us to follow him and become his disciples. 
Today we hear Jesus deliver probably the most famous sermon he ever preached, surrounded by his disciples. What he says is shocking, countercultural, and reveals a message we cannot miss. Jesus is highlighting for us the spirit of what God desires from his people, character traits or actions that, in human terms, are often not associated with blessedness. It isn't about religiosity or legalism, but about the heart. Jesus isn't giving us a list of do's and don'ts. Instead, he is saying, this is how things really are, and how my kingdom really works. What Jesus says paints a picture for what a true disciple should look like. (laughs) Studying Matthew's gospel, I was reminded that the word blessed can be translated as happy. So today, I would like us to reread or rehear the Beatitudes using the word happy and see if in the end, we can apply those traits to our lives of discipleships from a different perspective. First, happy are the poor in spirit. Jesus uses poor in spirit to refer to one's spiritual condition. Those who are poor in spirit realize that nothing they can do can get them into heaven. They are powerless, helpless, and undeserving. They are blessed because Jesus has not forgotten them. They are promised the kingdom of heaven. This flies in the face of what the world says and how the world operates. We are led to believe that it's the strongest and most put together that get the good life. But not so in God's kingdom. Jesus is declaring that it is a blessing to recognize our need to be filled by God's grace. Happy are those who mourn. Here, Jesus isn't talking about mourning over the loss of a loved one. Jesus is speaking about the mourning of repentance. Jesus is continuing the theme that was started in the prior verse. First, he says, blessed are those who recognize their sinfulness and need a savior. Now he adds, blessed are those who mourn for their sin, for they will be comforted. Jesus is saying that in the brokenness of our sin, God is with us. It is in that brokenness that we will find forgiveness, hope, and healing. Happy are the meek. To be meek has been described as having power, yet restraining it. A person who is meek is not weak. Rather, they have a gentle and humble spirit. It is not by chasing after worldly illusions of grandeur and power that one will inherit the earth, but by having a gentle spirit that recognizes Jesus as Lord. The meek have an accurate estimation of themselves before God and choose to submit to him, setting aside their own will for his purposes. They are happy and fulfilled because they shall inherit the earth. Happy are those who hunger for righteousness. Over and over again in the Bible, Jesus would speak to people in terms of people being hungry and thirsty, but needing something other than food and water to satiate that need. The desire for righteousness and the hunger to have a right relationship with God is the beginning of a walk with God. When Jesus says that those who hunger and thirst for righteousness are blessed, he is affirming that people who desire to be righteous, who hunger and thirst for the things of God, are blessed because they are pursuing the right thing. Happy are the merciful. Happy are those who show mercy and forgive, for they understand the mercy that's been shown to them. We often have a double standard when it comes to mercy. On the one hand, we would like to be shown mercy. On the other hand, we like to see others get what they deserve. Many people hold on tightly to wrongs that have been done against them. 
However, by holding on to those wrongs, they are letting go of God's mercy. You cannot hold on to both. Grace seems unfair until you need some. Jesus is teaching us that the good life comes to those that offer what is undeserved mercy. The good life will not come to those who hang on to past grievances. It will not come to those who are stingy with their grace. The good life belongs to those who give the undeserved gift of grace because they were given an undeserved gift of grace. Happy are the pure in heart. Happy are those who focus on the motives of their actions, for they shall see God. The religious leaders in Jesus' day were hung up on ceremonial cleanliness. They had a habit of fixing their external appearance while ignoring what was on the inside. Jesus continually called them out on their actions because he saw through their facade. We too often focus on our outward appearances, but ignore our hearts. We think we can just look the part, but Jesus comes along and says something different. He says it's the pure in heart that are happy. In other words, you shouldn't just focus your thinking on your actions, instead focus your heart on Jesus, because when you focus on your actions, your heart won't change. But when you focus on your heart, your actions soon will follow. Simply put, Jesus is saying, the blessed are those who do the right things for the right reasons. Happy are the peacemakers. Happy are those who have received peace and bring peace to others, for they are the sons and daughters of God. When Jesus says the peacemakers will be called sons and daughters of God, this is not just a statement of relationship, but of character. Jesus is saying something about us. When you make peace, you reflect the likeness of God. People see a reflection of his glory. Think about how God makes peace and what it's going to take you to do, for you to do this hard work. When we pursue peace, we can be a reflection of the kind of peace God gives and desires for his beloved. And finally, happy are those who are persecuted. Wow, <laughs> does this one hit a nerve? I'm supposed to be happy when I'm persecuted? Let's dig a little deeper into the words Jesus uses to hear this beatitude's meaning. The eighth and final beatitude is pointing to us to focus on humility, meekness, right relationships, mercy, purity of heart, and peacemaking, which are all positive <coughs> qualities. But Jesus also includes the possibility of persecution for righteousness' sake. This arises from those previous seven because the forces that oppose God's ways still hold great power in our world. We are called to hold strong in our beliefs even though we may be persecuted for our opinions because they might not be popular. If we are treated unfairly due to our faith, we will ultimately be blessed in the next life and inherit the kingdom of heaven. As disciples, we should hold fast to our beliefs even when we are told to do something that contradicts our beliefs or that we know is wrong. Jesus is not telling us to fake it, grin and bear it. What he's saying is that there is something in us that endures beyond our current circumstance. There is something in us that despite how dark and bad our lives might be, we can still rejoice and be glad. That's the gospel message, that no matter how bad life gets, we can rejoice, not in our circumstance, but in who Jesus is and who that makes us. And let us not forget, we serve a God who not just tells us to do this, but modeled it for us on the cross. 
The Beatitudes are still relevant today as they show the qualities needed to truly live out the word of God, to be centered on God and God's desires for our life. Jesus invites us to live in a true inward peace, a peace that leads to a desired outward peace and to bring reconciliation, to seek out opportunities for mercy and compassion, to hunger for justice and righteousness. I want to close with a challenge for each of us to think about and pray about. What would happen in our lives if we began each day and faced each challenge and struggle in our lives in the sure and certain hope that we were God's blessed people? Would our attitudes be different? Would we relate to others in a different way? Would we end our day differently knowing that whatever happened, we were blessed sometimes in ways we were unaware of at first? Jesus told the disciples, just as he tells us, not that we would be blessed, but that we are blessed. A respected pastor I know asks his congregation at the beginning of each worship service, how are you today, church? And the whole congregation responds, blessed, how about you? And he responds back, blessed indeed. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. <clears throat> Cultivate humility in your church, in gatherings of every size. Teach us to boast only in the cross. Shape your church to be people of kindness, generosity, and justice. Merciful God, we our prayer. The foundations of the earth bear witness to your faithfulness. The mountains and hills echo with your holiness. When we mistreat your creation, show us the error of our ways. Inspire us with reverent awe to honor all you have made. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You make foolish the wisdom of the world. Rise up honorable leaders who seek justice, love mercy, and pursue peace. Frustrate plans that are corrupt, wicked, and self-seeking. Prosper the work of peacemakers. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Bless all whom the world rejects. Accompany those who are regarded as foolish, weak, low, and despised. Reveal your power and presence at work where it is least expected. Give your life, strength, and wisdom to all in need, especially the family and friends of Bob Boardman, Dorothy Frankman, David Frock. Lily Mae Funk, Renee Georgiades, the friends and family of Robert Goat, Arlene Henry, the family and friends of George Hudock, Jackie Huntsworth, Betty Kajuski, the family and friends of Kathleen Lapp, Michelle McCarthy, Larry Seeger, the family and friends of Donald Spry, Paul Steyer, Stan Weichel, Earl White, Thomas Wickham, Raymond Wolfe, the people of Ukraine, the victims of natural disasters in California, victims of gun violence, and everyone throughout the world in harm's way. Merciful God, we receive our prayer. As with your people Israel, remind this congregation of your saving act. Remind us of how your faithfulness brought us through difficulties and sustained us despite our weakness. Establish the cross as the center of our life together. Merciful God, we receive our prayer. Praise to you for your blessed saints in every time and place. Trust in you, accompany them in poverty, persecution, and in every trial. We trust you abide with your people always. Merciful God, we receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share with one another the peace of Christ.
Please stand as you are able. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless and strengthen and uphold you today and always. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 